Hello, this is Anna, and we are moving on to part two of the digestive system in unit 11, and we're going to be looking a little bit more closely at your intestines, or my intestines, or someone else's, anyone's, some dead person's. Next slide. All right, so your obligatory no note slide right here. Um, know everything, all right? Nutrient absorption, primary site. You need to know that it starts at the pyloric sphincter and it's gonna end at the ileocecal valve. Notice the spelling on this, that I is important, okay? You wanna know the three parts, how long they are in a dead body. This is a dead person's length. It's a little bit shorter in a living person because of muscle tone. All right, next slide. So let's first kind of look at the histological structure of the small intestines. I really like this picture that comes out of your book, okay? The first thing I like is that it shows you the plique circularis, really, really nice. And that's just these folds right here. This is one of the three mechanisms for increasing surface area. Note that that is one of the th questions you have on your um, lab manual activities is, one of the questions asked, what are the three mechanisms to increase surface area? This is the first one, the plique circularis. And depending on where you are, they reverse the words. Some people do it plique circularis, some do it circularis plique. I don't care, either way. All right, the next thing I really like is it shows you the layers. So first of all, you've got this really nice layer of the muscularis externa, okay? Um, now, they're not using it on this picture, but it's really actually important to say muscularis externa so that you don't get it mixed up with the muscularis interna, all right? So actually, the outermost layer is the serosa, and then you've got the muscularis externa, and then you've got the submucosa, and then you've got the mucosa. Now, one thing I don't like about this picture is that they are not showing the muscularis interna. So I'm kind of drawing it in for you. Or the, not interna, muscularis mucosi. Did I say interna? What am I thinking of? Mucosi, all right. So the mucosa consists of the muscularis mucosi. It consists of the lamina propria and it consists of the epithelium. Now, in this case, since we're dealing with small intestines, it's going to be, um, what is it gonna be? Simple columnar, okay? So up in here where I'm doing the L, that's where your lamina propria is located. And then the muscularis mucosi goes there. And then all of this is the um, epithelium, okay? Now. In the plique, you can see these things. It looks like someone took a bunch of little fingers and strung them all together, okay? Those are the feli, okay? That is the second way to increase surface area. Then if you blow these up, which we'll do on another picture, you will see micro feli, which are on the plasma membranes of the individual simple columnar cells. Okay, they're folds in the plasma membrane. All right, let's move on to the next slide. All right, now we are at this really nice histology drawing where you can see the different structures, okay? Now, right there, you're seeing that muscularis mucosi, and then everything from here to here, and from here to here, that is your lamina propria. Okay, within the lamina propria, I'm gonna erase some of this so it's not obscuring your vision. All right, within the lamina propria, you've got your capillary beds, you've got nerve endings, you've got um, white blood cells, you've got collagen fibers, okay? Most of the lamina propria that you are gonna be looking at is typically going to be a real or CTP, so that's what you should be looking for. Here is embedded within it a nice little lymphatic nodule, so you got a lot of B cells right there. Also within this lamina propria, really, really important, 
lacteal. Now you should kind of remember this from previous units, okay, where we looked at the lymphatic system a little bit. We didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. So the lacteal, remember the drainage is in this direction and it goes up into those villi. And it's going to be absorbing the interstitial fluid. It's also going to be absorbing the fatty molecules. We call it, um, when it gets in there, we'll call it fatty lymph or um, chyle. Okay, so fat, fat globules are too big to fit into those capillaries, so they need to be sucked up into the lacteal from the interstitial fluid, okay? Now, continuing on with the mucosa, so remember the mucosa is three parts. One, the muscularis mucosi, two, the lamina propria, and three, the epithelium. Now, with the intestines, we are dealing with simple columnar epithelium, and you've got microphylli on that epithelium. So everything over here that's kind of purple stained, that is the simple columnar cells with microphylli, okay? Now, we also have shoved in there the periodic goblet cell. Goblet cells are shaped like a goblet. So if we turned this the other way, um, so if we turned it this way, Oh my God, my drawing, oh geez, what is that, a keyhole? Um, so imagine a cup. So this is, well now you know why I don't do a lot of drawing. This is a cup. Another word for cup is a goblet. So it looks like a, a cup and that's why it's named it that. All of this stuff in here is mucus. And so it secretes a nice thick coating of mucus onto the surface of those feli. Okay. so. The, this whole thing is the felis. Now, if we take one single cell and we blow it up so you can see it, you can see that it's taken its plasma membrane and wrinkled it all up. If this was not wrinkled up, it would look like, um, like this. Okay? Um, something like that, okay? So by wrinkling it up like an accordion on a fan, we increase surface area for absorption and secretion, okay? Um, now down here in the pits right there, we've got intestinal crypts, um, and you'll find some specialized cells in there that secrete um, locally acting hormones, um, peptides, little things like that that are involved in um, stuff. Digestion, that are involved in digestion. All right, so we've got two names that we can use for the intestinal glands. Your book is using intestinal gland, but I learned it as cryptids of Leberkuhn. I tend to fall back to using that because that's what I'm used to. And if you work with anybody really old, they'll probably say the cryptid Leberkuhn. So you should know both names, but you can use either of them on quizzes. I don't care which one you use, okay? I think that's everything on this slide, so let's move on. All right, so now we can look at our photomicrograph, okay? And again, what you're gonna see is, let's actually kind of come over here. This is lamin appropria, let's change color. That is lamin appropria, that is lamin appropria, that is lamin appropria, that's lamin appropria, that, 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 all right? All of this stuff is lamin appropria, okay? It is the areolar CTP that is in between the folds and also down here in the base, and I'm having a hard time putting these down here because there's so many little glands, um, before you get to that muscularis mucosi, okay? So again, all lamin appropria. You can't see the lacteals or capillary beds at this magnification, you just have to believe. And then you've got the epithelium here, okay? So you can see the pink staining slides are simple columnar epithelium. You can't see the microphylli, but you do need to know that they are there. Anything that's clear, so you can see clear here, clear here, here, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Those are all goblet cells. Let me erase those so you can see them better, okay? Um, so you should be able to identify those. Now, at, the easiest way to find the intestinal glands is to just find a base okay the base of the feli is where you're going to find um, those glands okay all right next slide all right so in this picture i've lost my arrow 
But what I want to focus on is the fact that we are in the duodenum. And in the duodenum, we have a very special thing called Brunner's glands. They're also called duodenal glands. I don't care what you call them. All right, that's those things, okay? You should be able to identify them and say what they do. They secrete an alkaline mucus that neutralizes the acidity of the chyme. The chyme is the junk coming from your stomach through the pyloric sphincter into the duodenum. If you don't re uh, increase the pH, meaning you make it less acidic, all right, because remember, the pH of the stomach is around a two, and you want to bring it up. Okay, you want a higher number, which makes it less acidic. Okay, so remember how the pH scale works. If you've forgotten, go and look it up. It's super important, okay? Um, and we do that because if you don't do that, your stomach acids in the chyme will start to digest your duodenum and eat delicious little holes in them, okay? All right, the structure of the duodenal glands are very similar to those sweat glands, which are long coiled up tubes, and then in this picture, you're cutting them transversely so that you see all the little tubes cut into little circles, okay? All right, next slide. All right, here we've zoomed in, and this is nice because you can see the lamina propria here, you can see the intestinal crypts here, and you can see a really nice band of muscularis mucosi right there, okay? And so then we've got our submucosa, which in this case looks like it's also a realer CTP. And here you can see the wonderful simple cuboidal cells of the Brunner's gland. Okay, it's a really nice picture. All right, the jejunum is structured very similarly to the duodenum. All right, you're going to see the absorption cells. You've got lots of little goblet cells. Um, those goblet cells and the structure of the feli is what tells you you're still with the intestines, okay? Now, if we are looking at a histology slide, just histology, so a photo micrograph, I typically do not ask people on a quiz to distinguish duodenum from jejunum from ileum. You can put small intestines. If it is a drawing or it is a, um, so I'll just write that drawing, you need to distinguish between the three types drawing or histology model, okay? Distinguish, wow, what kind of handwriting is that? Probably get tired of me saying that between three types, okay? However, if it's a photomicrograph, all right, I don't care, you can just put small intestines. However, I do know that I have questions on the quiz that asks about Brunner's glands and about Pyre's patches. So if you find those, you know that you're in these areas. Pyre's patch, you can find them elsewhere, but primarily all of our slides are on the ileum, okay? So that's just a little hint. Now we're looking at the jejunum because we should. It's good for us. Um, and you can see you've got your lamina propria, the epithelium, and so forth. Now this picture in here, I slip it in because it is really one of the few that's close enough where you can see the cute little microphili, okay? And again, those are folds of the plasma membrane. All right, next slide. All right, here is our ileum picture. And with the ileum, you will see distinctive villi still. So that's how you know it's small intestines and not large intestines. But then you're going to have these areas where it looks like a cancer has grown in the tissue and you've got this huge swelling and this is all lymphatic tissue and you got tons of B cells and sometimes other white blood cells as, as well, okay? So here's one as well, okay? This is called the germinal center where you have a high concentration of those um, antibody um, secreting B cells. Oh, look, the C disappeared when I converted this file. So we'll, we'll use the C since I've got a C here, okay? So what you should know, you're looking at the ileum. This thing is a Peyer's patch. It is involved in immunity, okay? So this is where you're going to have B cells that secrete 
antibodies. Don't you hate my handwriting? Okay, next slide. All right, now we are moving on to the large intestines. A synonym is colon. Again, I don't care what word you use. Now your colon is approximately five feet long when you're dead. When you're alive, it's a little bit shorter because of muscle tone, okay? It is gonna start right here with the ileocecal valve. Now this, you can see, it's been cut so that you can see into it. So this is ileum, and then they've ripped out the rest of the jejunum and the duodenum so that you could see it, okay? So the ileocecal valve is a true sphincter, and it's a one-way check valve for fluids to move from the ileum to the cecum of your colon. So the cecum is C-shaped, so this little part is called the cecum. Off of the cecum, we have a tube called the appendix. The appendix is not vestigial. It does have function in our immune system, and if you remove it, it does reduce immunity or shifts immunity responsibilities to other areas of the body, okay? Then we're gonna go up. So I want you to take your right hand and put it down at your lower hip over kind of by your ASIS, okay? That's about where you're gonna find your ce cecum. Now eat some beans or something that makes you really gassy, and then you can feel the pain of the gas move from your cecum up, all right? That is your ascending colon. So follow that all the way up to your ribs, okay? So your ribs are gonna be right about here, and now you've got your transverse colon that transverses from one side to the other. Then going down, you have the descending colon, so that's on your left side by your left hand. And then down below your ASIS again, okay, you have an S-shaped section that we call the sigmoid colon. So S for sigmoid. Straight is rectum, and then this is gonna be anus, okay? Let me erase some of this mess so that we can look at the other structures I want you to learn. Uh. Okay. Now, you will notice that you have a little bit of the greater omentum that's been flipped up. You will also see that you have some wonderful mesentery anchoring the colon to that back wall. Okay, now what I want you to notice is this special band of smooth muscle called tinei coli, which is labeled right here. So it's right here, it's right here. This is all tinei coli, okay? This tightens up and causes a pucker. That pucker is called the hostrum. All right, so this right here is one hostrum. Here is another hostrum. Plural is hostra, okay? When you do digestion, you do these short-term little contractions. It'll move the poo from here to here, and then it'll move it to here from here, and then it'll move it from here to here. And then a couple of times a day, you do these mass movements where it moves this and one big contraction all the way down to here, and then you gotta go, okay? Um, but we do these nice little movements between the hostrum where you can then have more time for um, absorbing um, water and vitamins and whatever, okay? Um, what's next? Um, we also have another thing. We don't really know what it does. They're called epiploic appendages. So they're right here, these little fat tags, all right? And they hang off the colon in various areas. Okay, I think that's everything on this, so let's go to the last slide. All right, this is the photomicrograph of the colon. What you wanna notice, no feli, okay? You're not seeing the feli. You do have a little bit of folding, but you don't have the feli the way you see it in the small intestines. What you see instead is a fairly flat-ish surface, and then the epithelium is almost completely dominated by goblet cells, all right? They secrete copious quantities of lubricating mucus. okay? Now, this is because your feces is getting dried out. Dried stuff sticks, all right? Think about dried poo sticking to the inside of your toilet. 
diarrhea doesn't stick dried poo dried yeah anyway um so what you do is you basically grease heavily the inside of your colon so that your feces doesn't stick to it as it goes through that mucus also protects um, um, provides a barrier from bacterial gases okay because those bacterial gases can be pretty acidic and they would burn your cells so that mucus also kind of helps protect against that with your microbiome so goblet cells you it's all goblet cells all right that was the last slide for this section so you can go on to the um, the next part